I thought we'd take a look at some penny stamps and some penny coins today. A mix of the two hobbies, philately and numismatics. We'll start with the Queen Victoria on the left here and move our way right up to the present day with Queen Elizabeth on the end there. I'm not too sure whether you'll be able to see the coins at the moment. Don't worry, we will have a closer look at them. I set the stamps and the coins out in date order. As you can see, 1841 on the left, 1902, 1911, 1912, 1936, 1937, 1953, 68 and 1971. So we're starting with this penny red stamp from 1841. It's an imperfect example with the letters in the lower corners only. Often known as the poor man's penny black, as this stamp will cost you a fraction of the price of an equivalent penny black. And that's why we're starting with this, as I don't have any penny blacks. Penny blacks were only on sale for nine months, whilst the penny reds were on sale for 13 years. As for the coin, well, I don't have an 1841 penny. The best I can do is this pretty poor example from 1878, featuring a very worn bunhead portrait of Queen Victoria facing left. It's made from bronze and just over 7.2 million were made back in the day. And just to prove that it is an 1878 coin, I'll turn it over so you can see the date. There we go. I don't know if you're able to make it out, but it does say 1878. Now let's take a look at the Edward VII penny stamp and coin. This stamp was issued in 1902 and features a scarlet coloured king facing left. Either side of his face we have laurel leaves which symbolise victory and oak leaves which signify sovereignty. This penny stamp was issued almost one year after the king's accession to the throne and apparently there are at least 87 different shades of red that this stamp comes in. Now, when we look at the coin, we've got a much better example. As we can see, it shows Edward VII facing right. Just under 27 million of these were minted. A coin in this condition should cost you anything from around 50 pence to a pound. I don't have a 1902 version of the coin like I do with the stamp. This one comes from 1905. George V now, and he's represented by two stamps. The one on the left here was issued in 1911 and is known as a Downey head, as it's named after the court photographer W&D Downey. This design was deeply unpopular with the public and the king himself. And so in 1912, it was replaced with a much better definitive showing the king in profile facing left. This stamp is a lot easier on the eye than this one. The coin, which is dated 1912, almost adopted this three-quarter pose as well, but thankfully it went with the king's profile design instead, and here we can see him facing left. Engraved by Bertram McKennell and made of bronze, just over 48 million of these were made, so it's a very common coin. One in this condition should cost you about 10 pence to buy. Also, look out for the 1912 version containing the heat and mint mark at the bottom here. Then in 1936, this fella ruffled a few feathers. Edward VIII. As he reigned for less than a year, no coins were ever released to the general public. So all we have to look at is this stamp. It shows a photographic portrait of Edward facing left, different to the previous monarch's engraved designs. And that's about it really. After his abdication, large numbers of these stamps, saved by the public, has kept the collecting value very low, so they're practically worthless. George VI now, Another red one penny stamp, issued in May 1937. Again it sees the newly crowned king facing left, and we've got the four national flowers represented in each corner of the stamp. And King George VI, although a reluctant king, 
became one of the most popular monarchs in recent British history, due mainly to his leadership during World War II. As for the coin, well over 88 million of them were minted and show the king facing left on the front side here. And if we flip it over, we can see that it was minted in 1937. And finally, we move on to these three stamps from Queen Elizabeth's reign, starting with this Dorothy Wilding example, issued in 1953. And what personally annoys me about this stamp is that it's blue. Ever since the Penny Red was introduced in 1841, all subsequent issues have been red, until this one, 112 years later. The Queen can be seen in a three-quarter pose, similar to that of the Downy Head example from George V's reign. But unlike that stamp, this is a portrait far more pleasing on the eye. The Downy Head definitives lasted for 15 years, right up until 1967, when this iconic pre-decimal design from Arnold Machin took over. And again, we can see another color change to the new one penny stamp this time in olive. This particular example was released in 1968. And then we change again in 1971, when a decimal version of the stamp was issued. We can see the denomination changes from 1D to 1P, and the color is now classed as crimson. So we're almost back to the original red, but not quite. The penny coin has Elizabeth facing right, and this design remained standard from 1954 to 1970. And then once decimalization occurred, they looked like this, tiny in comparison. And this coin is from 1971. Right, let's have a look at all the coins in date order. A lot of you will know this already, but for those that don't, you'll notice that each monarch, except Edward VIII, alternates between facing left and facing right. So we've got Victoria left, Edward VII right, George V left, then there's a bit of a break, and we see George VI facing left, and then Queen Elizabeth facing right. If Edward VIII had continued to be king, he wanted to break this tradition which had been in place since the beginning of Charles II's reign in 1630. He wanted his portrait to face left, instead of the intended right. But as no coins made it into general circulation, it never happened. So when his brother took over as king, he continued the tradition by facing left as Edward should have faced right. And when Queen Elizabeth either dies or steps down from her royal duties, and Prince Charles becomes King Charles, his portrait will face left on all future coinage. Now before some of you say that there are other one penny stamps that have been issued under these monarchs, I know that, but I just decided to concentrate on the first issue definitives. Right, that wraps this one up. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Give it a big thumbs up and turn on that notification bell. As always, thanks for watching if you have. And until the next one, bye for now.